Welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. In this topic, we're going to be looking at externalities. So far, our welfare economics has been easy because of a very simple relationship. If there are no externalities, then we know that the demand curve is the marginal private value curve. But it is also the marginal social value curve. Why is that the case? Well, remember, if there are no externalities, then all of the value created by a transaction is the value to the buyers who get the goods and services. So the demand curve, which measures buyers' willingness to pay, also gives their marginal private value. And because they're the only ones who get value, it also measures the marginal social value. But if we have externalities, there may be values created outside the market. So that the demand curve will still be the marginal private value curve, but it may no longer be the marginal social value curve. And similarly, if there are no externalities, then the supply curve is also the marginal private cost curve, and it is also the marginal social cost curve. Why? Well, because the only costs that are incurred are the costs of the producers of the goods or the sellers of the goods and services. The supply curve measures their marginal cost, and because there are no externalities, there no, are no other costs. But if there are external costs outside the market, that relationship may no longer hold. So externalities are going to break the link between private and social value and between private and social costs. And so we're going to need to start by working out what are our marginal social cost curves and our marginal social value curves. Because they're no longer going to be just demand and supply. So our first task is to work out how do we determine the marginal social cost and the marginal social value when there is an externality? Let's look at a simple example. Remember, our definition is that an externality exists if one person's actions affect another person's welfare, but there is no compensation. So we'll look at a simple example of a positive externality. This is... Sam. Let's suppose that Sam tends to be a bit sweaty, and he doesn't particularly like to sweat and smell bad, so he uses a deodorant, as illustrated here. Because Sam values deodorant, we can look at Sam's demand curve for deodorant. And we'll do it in a table first. Over here we're going to have the price of deodorant uh, per squirt, and we'll have the number of squirts per day Sam would like to buy, holding everything else equal, or, to use the economic term, ceteris paribus. So what does our demand table tell us? Well, at a very high price, like $1.10 per squirt, Sam's going to say, look, forget it, I just can't afford to use any deodorant. If a price is a bit lower, at say, $0.90, cents, Sam may have, say, one squirt a day. If the price gets a bit lower, at say, $0.70, cents, he'll buy two squirts a day. If the price gets even lower, let's say the price gets down to, say, 50 cents, he'll want to buy three squirts a day. At a price of 30 cents, Sam would like to buy four squirts a day, and so on. As the price gets lower, Sam wants to buy more deodorant, until at a price of zero, he'd be willing to have five and a half squirts of deodorant per day. So, we can draw Sam's demand curve for deodorant. We can do that just by translating our table. And so our table tells us, for example, at $1.10, Sam just decides he wants no deodorant, he'll smell bad. At, say, a price of 50 cents per squirt, he's willing to buy three squirts of deodorant per day. And at a price of 30 cents, he would like to buy say, four squirts of deodorant per day. Our standard demand curve, given the price, how many squirts of deodorant would Sam like to buy? 
But remember, we can also read this demand curve the other way. We can read it as a marginal value curve. So we know that for his first squirt of deodorant, Sam is just willing to pay 90 cents, or in other words, his marginal value of that first squirt of deodorant is 90 cents. For his second squirt of deodorant, well, he's only willing to pay that if he can get it for 70 cents, so his marginal value, his private marginal value of that second squirt of deodorant is just 70 cents. And similarly, for five squirts of deodorant, his marginal value of his fifth squirt, well, he's just willing to pay 10 cents to get that fifth squirt of deodorant. If the price was anything above 10 cents, he wouldn't buy five squirts of deodorant. He'd buy less. So to get him to buy five squirts of deodorant, the price has to be 10 cents. That's his marginal willingness to pay or marginal value of the fifth squirt of deodorant. So this green curve also gives us Sam's marginal private value. It's his private, marginal private value curve for squirts of deodorant. Now Sam has uh, co-workers who we've got on the diagram down here. And those co-workers, well, they really would prefer Sam to use deodorant. When he uses a deodorant, they get the benefit of not having to put up with his sweaty smell all day. So let's say that every time Sam uses a squirt of deodorant, his co-workers in total get 20 cents worth of benefit. In other words, his co-workers would be willing to pay Sam 20 cents to take an extra squirt of deodorant. Sam's work colleagues gain when Sam uses extra squirts of deodorant. But there's unlikely to be any compensation. Why? Well, each of the co-workers is going to be wanting someone else to pay Sam to squirt more deodorant. If that happened, they'd get the benefit without having to actually pay Sam themselves. What about if his co-workers were able to get around that free riding problem and could coordinate as a group to go up to Sam and give him, say, one dollar and ask him to use buy more squirts of deodorant per day? Well, Sam might get a bit upset by that. Sam might refuse to take the money. Sam might storm out and uh, there'd be a fight in the office. Instead of getting less sweat, you might get a bit more. So the problem is that even though Sam creates a positive benefit for his co-workers when he uses deodorant, there's unlikely to be any compensation. And that means that Sam, when he uses more deodorant, creates a positive externality. When he consumes deodorant, there's a positive benefit to his co-workers, but there's unlikely to be any compensation. So because there's a positive externality in consumption, Sam's marginal private value of using deodorant is going to be different from the marginal social value. So how do we find the marginal social value when Sam uses deodorant? First, we'll show it in this simple table. In the first column, we have the number of squirts of deodorant per day. The second column is the marginal value to Sam of each squirt. That's just derived from Sam's demand curve, or his demand table. The third column is the marginal value to Sam's co-workers. Remember, we said that Sam's co-workers are willing to pay an extra 20 cents for each extra squirt, or their marginal value for an extra squirt of deodorant is going to be 20 cents for each extra squirt. And finally, what's going to be our marginal social value? Well, that's going to be in our fourth column over here. We're going to use our dollar as a dollar assumption, and we're just going to add up the marginal value to Sam and the marginal value to Sam's co-workers, and that's going to give us the total marginal value or the marginal social value. It's going to tell us the extra value created when Sam uses an extra squirt of deodorant. The value to Sam plus the value to everybody else under a dollar is a dollar assumption. We just add them up. 
So, for example, if we look at that first squirt of deodorant that Sam can use in a day, remember Sam's marginal willingness to pay or his marginal private value is 90 cents on that squirt. To get an extra squirt to go from zero to one squirts, his colleagues get 20 cents worth of value. So the extra value created when Sam goes from zero squirts of deodorant to one squirt of deodorant is just his 90 cents plus his colleagues 20 cents added up. That gives us a total marginal social value of $1.10. Similarly, what about if Sam currently uses four squirts of deodorant? What would be his extra marginal value that he would create if he used a fifth squirt? Well, remember, his private marginal value of that fifth squirt is 10 cents. His colleagues still in total get 20 cents extra value from the fifth squirt. So his marginal social value of the fifth squirt is 10 cents plus 20 cents is 30 cents. So this column over here, this fourth column, gives us the marginal social value to Sam and his co-workers when he uses an extra squirt of deodorant. And we can show the marginal social value curve. We start off with Sam's demand curve or Sam's marginal private value curve, which we drew before. And we have to add on the external marginal value created by Sam. Remember, that's just 20 cents per squirt. So, for example, on that first squirt, the marginal social value is Sam's marginal private value of 90 cents plus the 20 cents that his colleagues get. That's $1.10. That's given here. One squirt. $1.10 is the marginal social value. And similarly, over here at his third squirt, Sam's private value, his marginal private value, is 50 cents. His colleagues get 20 cents in marginal value from that extra squirt. So we just move the curve up by 20 cents. 70 cents is the marginal social value of that third squirt. And so on. So we've now got two curves on our diagram. We have the marginal private value curve, which is a dotted green line. That's the marginal private value to Sam or Sam's demand curve. But we also now have the marginal social value curve. The marginal social value curve is higher than the marginal private value curve. It's higher by 20 cents, reflecting the marginal external value created by Sam through the positive externality when he uses more deodorant and he makes his co-workers better off. But there's no compensation. Now, why are these two curves important? Well, remember, it's demand or marginal private value which is going to be important for the market outcome. But our marginal social value curve, the solid green line, is going to be the curve that's important for our welfare economics because it's going to capture all of the benefits when Sam uses deodorant. Not just his own private ones, but the external benefits as well. So it's a marginal social value curve that will be important for welfare economics. Continue this topic next time.